Hi everyone and welcome to Squirrel Pie Productions. My name is Tommy. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 111 of my podcast. Thank you so much for being here today. If you're a new viewer, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, a big welcome back. Today is a nice, cloudy, cool Friday in January here on the Northern California coast where I'm coming to you from. There are show notes available for this episode in the description box below. That's where you'll find links to everything I talk about in today's episode. Thank you for being here. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> um, I have a couple of announcements to make before I get into talking about what I've been working on, what I've been knitting, and uh, that is the announcement of two new make-alongs that I'm starting. If you watched my last episode, I asked for suggestions on what to do for my, my next make-along, and you all had such amazing ideas. Thank you so much for suggesting everything you suggested. Um, I wanted to do every single one of them. I'm gonna do two right now, and I'm gonna do at least one of the other ones another time because it's such a good idea. So the two that I'm starting right now are, well, I'll talk about the first one first. This is a short-term one. It's gonna run through the end of March, and it's the Finish It, Fix It, or Frog It Make Along. And there's gonna be a hashtag on Instagram, which is hashtag FinFixFrogMal. It's down here. And um, you'll be able to enter on Instagram and on Ravelry. I know I don't use my Ravelry group that much, but I am gonna open a chatter thread and an FO thread on Ravelry so that you can participate there or on Instagram, you have your choice. I'm gonna pull for prizes for this from the Ravelry FO thread and the Instagram hashtag. So it kind of doesn't matter if you actually finish or not, because Instagram, you can have works in progresses or whatever. Uh, Ravelry, it'll be the FOs. But, and you can enter both ways. So pretty much the idea is to go through your current whips, UFOs, and finished objects and figure out things that need to be finished <laughs> or ripped out. Um, if there are whips that have been sitting there forever, go through them. Um, figure out what you want to actually just get off the needles, either by finishing them or by ripping the yarn out, using it for something else or going through your FOs that need to be fixed. So I'm a big supporter of that. I've done that a lot, pretty much exclusively with finished sweaters. So I'll have a finished sweater that I've had for a long time. There's something that I don't like about it. Either it makes me not wear it or I just deal with it when I do wear it. And so I'm gonna include that too. If you have a finished object that needs something done to it to make it more wearable, fix it and that'll be included in this make along. So if you finish something that you've had as an UFO or a whip, um, I guess I'm thinking, I'm not usually big on rules, but since it's this kind of like finish it or frog it thing, I'm thinking it's something you've cast on prior to this past new year. So I don't know, a whip that's at least a few weeks old at this point. <laughs> And honor system, I don't care, I'm not gonna check you. But, so, if you finish something, like an UFO, that'll count for an FO. If you frog the yarn from an UFO, or just from a whip or whatever, that finished frogged yarn counts as an FO. Um, if you fix something that needed fixing, that counts as an FO. If you rip something out, you can enter your ripped out yarn as an FO. And then if you make something out of that yarn, you can enter that FO again in the finished objects thread. So. so I'm pretty excited about that one because I definitely have an UFO bin. And I think my next vlog, which will probably be in a week from now, is gonna be me going through that UFO bin and showing you what I have on the needles and maybe trying to decide when I'm gonna finish and when I'm just gonna rip out. So I'm pretty excited about that one. And that is a pretty short term one. I kind of just want to use that as like a boost to try to get some of that stuff off the needles out of our bins. So that's going to run for the next couple months. It's going to be the end of March that I will close it up and um, I'll draw for prizes for that. My next make along that I'm going to be starting 
is my very first year-long make-along. I've never done that before, but I do like the idea of them. And this was another really great idea that was suggested to me in the comments of my last video. And this is a Seasons make-along. So I talked about last episode how much I love Seasons. I talked about it at the end when I was talking about the new year. I love, I love Seasons. I love the different Seasons. I love changing Seasons. I love the equinoxes and the solstices. I love them. So I'm going to do a make-along that's gonna run the whole year of 2021 where whatever season it is at that time, make something inspired by the season. And that can be interpreted however you want, um, something inspired by the weather of the season or just the feel of the season or a holiday that's in the season or whatever. <laughs> Use your imagination. And um, that's kind of the only rule. I don't care how big or small the project is. And I know that seasons are different in different places, so wherever you are, whatever season it is, whatever that season feels like to you, that's what your inspiration should be. And I'm gonna, same thing, have a Ravelry chatter and FO thread, and there'll be a hashtag on Instagram, and that'll be seasons MAL 2021. So again, I'll be pulling for prizes from both the Ravelry FO thread and the hashtag on Instagram. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down by the seasons, but there's going to be five sections for this make along because we're already halfway through winter. So at the end of this winter, I'm going to draw for prizes from here until then. And then at the end of spring, I'll draw for prizes at the end of summer. I'll draw for prizes at the end of autumn. And then again, at the end of the year, I'll draw for prizes again. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do that. I'm, it might just be like a second winter one, but it might also be like an overall year long one. I might do both. So like if you've participated in every season or something, there might be something extra. I don't know. I don't know yet. We'll see. We'll work that out. But for now, um, if you enter in that season, and I think there'll be a separate thread for every season on Ravelry. I wonder if I should do a separate hashtag for every season on Instagram. Huh, I didn't think about that. I will let you know down here what the official hashtags are. <laughs> I'll figure it out. But um, yeah, so I'm also very excited about that one. I think that's a really cool idea and I'm really happy to I'm really happy about the idea of making things inspired by seasons and however you interpret that, however literally or li literarily you take that, <laughs> it's up to you. And I'm, hap I'm excited about the creativity within that kind of spectrum of interpretation of seasons. I think there's a lot of inspiration to draw from, from each season. There are also a lot of knitting patterns, and it's not just knitting, it's make-along, so sewing, crochet, whatever, 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 cross-stitch. Um, there are some books, though, that I know of that are inspired by the time of year in terms of its patterns. There's an Elizabeth Zimmerman book, which I can't remember what it's called, but uh, I have a very old copy of it, and it's about knitting for the month that you're in. So that could be really cool. I've actually always wanted to kind of go through that book and knit along through a whole year. I'm not going to, I've decided. I just don't want to knit all the stuff that's in that book. But I think it's a really great place to draw inspiration from. There are also several books about knitting for certain seasons, certain weather, stuff like that. So yeah, I think it's really exciting and I hope you'll join me. Um, so those are the two make-alongs we're doing right now. There was also suggested to me a cardigan make-along, which I definitely want to do, but I don't want to overload. So I'm thinking after the finish fix it or frog it make-along, we'll do a cardigan. Because you know I like cardigans. Okay, so let's move on to my knitting. I have two finished objects this time. The first one I am wearing. This is my finished Ramona cardigan. I finished finished it last night by putting the buttons on and I'm really excited about it. I love it. Uh, so this is the Ramona cardigan pattern by Elizabeth Smith and I knit it using Moonstone Dye Works, which is my own hand dyed yarn in the Merino Sport base, which is 100% superwash merino sport weight. And this is the dark crystal colorway. 
I used almost exactly three skeins. So at the end of my third skein, that is what I had left over. And that little ball right there is my ripped out swatch because I like to uh, use reuse swatch yarn. But the Ramona cardigan was a really nice and simple and easy knit. It's a top down raglan and it's a cardigan with buttons, you do the body first, you cast on and just go straight into the stockinette and raglan shaping, and then afterwards you pick up for the neckband and knit up and then bind off, and then you pick up for the button bands and do those separately. I did change one thing about this cardigan, and it's that all of the ribbing that I did, I did one by one, and it's supposed to be a broken rib in the pattern. And I just decided that I didn't want to do that. I really like basic ribbing. So I switched it to that. I'm very happy with my choice. And I will get up and show you what it looks like. So this is it. Uh, I'm so happy with it. I did alternate skeins when I was knitting with the yarn, except for the sleeves. I didn't alternate there. But um, I have nice long sleeves, which I'm very happy about. I don't often knit my sleeves long enough for my liking, but this is perfect. Um, and the sleeves are really nice and like kind of snug all the way down, which I really like. Um, the side has like a faux seam running down it. That's just a purl stitch. And then the raglan shaping has kind of a broken, like a it's like a, a garter line going down it. So it's not just stockinette, it's a knit and purl stitch going down the whole thing. Um, I really like how the neckline came out. I'll tell you about that in a little bit. And I did the length that it calls for in the pattern. It's got a nice thick ribbing, which I really like. And I really like wearing my cardigans open most of the way and then just closed at the top. I can't even close this all the way right now because of that this situation going on. If you haven't watched the last couple episodes, I am five months pregnant, so this is my option right now. I also really like it just unbuttoned like that. So yeah. I did have to unpick and redo the bind off on the neckline after the whole thing was completed because originally what I did was the type of bind off that I typically do, um, just in general, and it's a really stretchy bind off where you like, you knit one and then you knit those two stitches together, I think like through the back loop or something, and then you do that over and over and over again. And for a neckline that was just way too stretchy to where it ended up like giving that curling effect at the end, and even after I put it on, it was still just like kind of flared out. Um, and it worked. I did it on the bottom, which was fine. And I did it on the neckline and it, I wasn't quite happy with it, but I was like, whatever, it'll be fine. <laughs> and then I just, on the button bands, I switched to a more, I don't know, standard bind off where you knit one, knit one, and then pass that first stitch over the second one and do that over and over and over. And that worked out way better for the button bands. And when I finished the whole thing, I decided to just redo this one. And since you do the neckline and then the button bands, I was a little worried that there would be like an attachment there, you know, that I would that would mess me up in unpicking it. But it didn't really. I kind of had to finagle a little piece at the end, but it was fine. So that did take a little extra doing, but I'm really glad I redid it because the neckline looks way better. Um, I'm also much happier with this neckline than with my first Ramona. So I have knit the Ramona pattern before. This is the Ramona light and the regular Ramona is, this is with sport weight yarn. The regular Ramona is knit with worsted weight yarn. And I have made that one in the past. And when I knit that first one, I thought it was dumb and a waste of time to start with the stockinette and then go back later, pick up stitches and knit the ribbing that way. I just was like, I'm just going to start with the ribbing, do the ribbing and then go into the sweater. And I don't know if that's the reason, but that neckline is way more wide and it's way looser than this one. So 
I think I learned my lesson. I think the reason why designers have you start the sweater and then pick up the neckline later is to kind of give it a little more structure, a little less stretchiness, and to kind of close up the neckline a little bit. Even this neckline is a little less of a tight crew neck than it shows in the pattern. So I'm really happy I listened to the pattern this time and did that because while I do typically like a really wide neckline, I don't know, something about this pattern just, I don't know, it doesn't look great with the super wide neck neckline on my other one. So I'm happier with this neckline. I'm really happy with the button bands. I did just some super cheap, plain, lightweight plastic but black buttons. There should be seven buttons on here, but and there's a buttonhole down here for another one, but I did the buttons last night and it was late and I got lazy and I was like, I'm never gonna use that last button anyway. I don't feel like doing it right now, so I didn't. So who knows, maybe one day I'll put that last button on, but I don't typically button these types of cardigans down all the way anyway, so it's not on there right now. But I'm super happy with this sweater. I really, really like it. I love the colorway. Um, this is a pretty newer, this is a newer colorway from Moonstone Dioworks, and uh, I just really like it. And I really like how it knit up, so. That is my sweater. I'm very happy it's done. I now no longer have any sweaters for myself on the needles. Uh, I do have one sweater still for Colin on the needles, and that is just a slow project. That is an all over broken rib cardigan, which isn't the funnest thing in the world to do for me. And it's big and there's just a lot of it. So I pick it up and I put it down here and there, and right now it's down. So, but hey, maybe I'll pick it up for the finish it, fix it, or for retail. Now, anyway, yeah, I'm definitely gonna be itching to get another sweater on my needles soon. I also have the Oxbow cardigan, which is something that I started and had to rip out, which I haven't done yet, and then I need to restart it, so that's probably going to be coming up next. I showed that once, probably like two or three episodes ago, and I need to restart that, so that'll probably be next. But there are a lot of sweaters on my radar right now. All cardigans. <laughs> so moving on though to my next finished object, I finished a pair of socks, and these are my Cassiopeia socks. And this again is the same yarn as this sweater. It's Moonstone Dye Works in the Merino Sport Base, and this is the Cassiopeia colorway. And this is just a top-down sock. And I did 56 stitches for the cast on. Since this is a sport weight yarn, I went up a needle size and down in stitch count. So I would typically do, for fingering weight yarn, 64 stitches on a size zero. But for this sock, I did 60. 56 stitches on a size one. So I did one by one ribbing for the cuff, and then I switched to three by one ribbing for the rest of the sock. I did a heel flap and gusset, and then just stocking it on the bottom of the foot, and I did a plain wedge toe. I really, really like these socks. This is my first sport weight sock in a long time, and I think it might be my first ever all over rib sock for myself. Uh, here's the other one. And uh, I want more ribbed socks. I didn't love, love, love the process of knitting it. It was okay, it was fine. But it's definitely a lot funner and easier just to do a plain stockinette sock. But I really like how they fit. Uh, I definitely wish I would have made the leg longer. This is a shorter leg than I normally like for myself. But I was totally tricked by the ribbing. <laughs> because ribbing, um, brings your fabric in a whole lot, so it looks a lot skinnier. And when something is skinnier, it just looks a lot longer than it is. So I thought I knit the cuff or the leg long enough, and I just didn't. And I don't measure, I just kind of go based off sight and feel. So I definitely wish I would have made them a little longer, but it's okay. I don't mind. I really, really like them. I love how they fit. And I am excited to cast on another pair of socks. I'm considering 
doing another pattern sock. I don't know if it'll be a rib sock or some other kind of pattern, but I typically shy away from pattern socks just because I like knitting stockinette socks so much, but I just like wearing pattern socks more. They fit nicer, they feel better. So I don't know, we'll see. I do though think that my next sock is gonna be a thicker weight sock. I really would like to do like a worsted weight all over rib sock. So we'll see, I'm not sure. But these ones are done. I'm very happy that they're done. I was very happy to have them off the needles because I was very bored with them. <laughs> so um, this is what I have left. I used most of the skein, but I have quite a bit left over. So um, this and this are the same base. And so I kind of considered doing something with the leftovers together because I think they look pretty good together. So we'll see. Those are my finished objects. I am stoked to have both of those off the needles and to have a couple finished objects because it's been a little while. And now I can start focusing on getting things done beyond these two things because I think they were kind of my priorities. And now that they're done, I do have a couple new cast-ons. My first whip though that I'm gonna show you is not a new cast-on. This is a project that I did put down for a little while just so that I could finish this stuff up, but I picked it up again yesterday and I'm so happy to be working on this again. It's the funnest project in the whole entire world. These are the Wanderer slippers. And this is a thick sock pattern by Andrea Mowry. It's an all over color work pattern. I am using these two yarns for it. So this is Green Mountain Spinnery's New Mexico Organic. And this is a really, really beautiful 100% wool, non-superwash yarn. And I love it. It's the gray 8257 colorway. And um, so that is one color, and then this is the other yarn. This is some hand spun, and this was Into the World on the Superwash Targi base in the Great Minds colorway. Um, these are both about a DK, and I really, really like working with them. They're working up really nicely together, not only color-wise, but they feel like amazing together. Just the feel and the textures of both of these yarns go so nicely together. And that's what it's looking like. So the hand spun is doing like a stripey gradient kind of thing between purple and green and then like a marled purple and green too. And I really like it. The pattern calls for worsted weight yarn and a size US 8 needle, but uh, it only is written for one size and that size would have been just way too big for me, so I sized down with gauge and um, I'm knitting the pattern as written just with DK weight yarn instead of worsted and a size 7 needle instead of a size 8. And it fits really nicely. I'm very happy I did that and I'm very happy it's working out to fit just by following the pattern and sizing down with gauge. You kind of don't, unless you like do your math, you kind of don't know if that's gonna work out by just following the pattern exactly. And I'm not really that into doing the math. So I just tried it and it worked really nicely. So it's a top-down pattern. There's no ribbing or anything. You just cast on and start in with the color work. The color work pattern is really, really simple and it's really fun in that it's really easy to read your work and to figure out where you are. By the time I was down here, I like almost didn't even need the chart anymore. Uh, it looks really, really good, I think. And it calls for a color work wedge toe. There's a Kitchener stitch down there somewhere. And an afterthought heel. And I don't typically do afterthought heels, 
but here we are. <laughs> so I have just uh, picked up the stitches around the waist yarn. It's not a true afterthought heel. She has you put in waist yarn and then take out that yarn and pick up those stitches with your needle. I've done that and I've done one round of the heel so far. <laughs> so that's been fun. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Like I said, I don't typically like afterthought heels. I've only done one once and I didn't love doing it. I felt like it was confusing to figure out the fit and then it just didn't fit that good. And I don't know, meh, meh. <laughs> but I'm just going by the pattern. And since this is meant to be a slipper, so kind of oversized, it's not meant to fit like super snug anyway, I think it's gonna be totally fine. And I'm knitting these on my Licka Interchangeables and I've got them on my Knit Picks cords, which is my favorite combo. And I've got a little Chevy Rail stuff, Crystal Progress Keeper. I'm very much enjoying these. This is so fun to work on. I really like it. I was really craving some like really thick kind of oversized socks. And I've wanted to do color work socks for a very long time. And as I've said in a previous episode, I don't love Fingering weight. I don't love the fingering weight color work socks I've tried in the past because the same thing I had to size with gauge So my gauge ended up being like really tight on really small needles fine weight yarn And it was just too much and I didn't like it. So using thicker yarn and it's kind of a looser gauge too um, It's wonderful. I love it and using this like nice wooly half of its non superwash yarn half of its hand spun yarn uh, It just feels really good really am really loving this project. So I wanted to do the afterthought heel on the first one to make sure everything fit before starting the second one. So that's where I'm at. I have not cast on the second one yet, but I'm definitely not going to get second slipper syndrome here because these are so much. And these are living in my Woodsy and Wild crow bag. Okay, my next work in progress is a new cast on and it's living in my little uprooted fibers snappy bag. This is the Hydra headband by Lerka of Fiber Tales. And I saw this on, she has a podcast and I saw it on her last couple episodes. I saw on her last episode that she published it and I was very excited. I've been wanting to make a headband for a while and just haven't done it yet. I don't think I ever really found the right pattern that I wanted to make. And when I saw this one, I fell in love with it and I thought it was perfect, so I got it and cast it on. Um, so the Hydra headband is part of a set. The patterns are sold separately, but you do get a discount if you buy both. I only got the headband, but there's also a mitts pattern with the same uh, pattern on it. <laughs> and here's where I'm at. So as you can see, this is very dark yarn. <laughs> I'm using Harrisville Designs Nightshades. And this is in the Insomnia colorway. And this is my leftover cake from my Mazzy cardigan, which is the last cardigan that I finished. And that has become, hands down, my favorite cardigan. And I just love the yarn so much. And uh, the pattern calls for a worsted weight. This is a DK, but uh, I'm going for it. And I just kind of was looking for some worsted weight in my scrap stash because it calls for, I think like 30 to 40 grams of yarn. And I didn't, I don't know, I like using up scraps for that kind of stuff. So this is what I liked best in terms of color because since it's gonna go right here, right on my face, right on my hair, I wanted something that was gonna, you know, go okay with all of that. And so I didn't want anything too bright or cool toned, so I thought, black because I love wearing black um, would be perfect and the insomnia colorway of nightshades is the one that is olive toned and I really really love this yarn I just I love how it feels I love how it looks I love it I love working with it so this is a cabled pattern I am using US size 6 needles these are my high high sharps interchangeables I actually started doing this on some straight needles. I have like an old stash of various bamboo straight needles from my early knitting days. 
and I thought I would put those to use because it was just this little back and forth thing. Uh, and I did not like them. They were, they're really soft, you know, like some of those old bamboo needles. And they were okay, except when it came to doing the cables. Because with these cables, you're doing, along with the cable, a knit three together through the back loop stitch. And it was just like, nope. It was not happening with those needles. So I switched to these and it's much better. Um, this pattern is super simple and fun to work on. You're just working back and forth doing this cool little cable repeat. And uh, it's a four row repeat. That's super just simple and fun to do. And the cool thing about this pattern is that it's got a detail. So if you can see right here, there's a co two columns of knit stitches and it goes down this side and this side. And I should have stitch markers down here. I don't yet, but I will. And at the end of the pattern, you do some cool thing with those two columns of knit stitches and you turn them into a braid. I don't know how it's done yet. I haven't read that far in the pattern, but I think it involves dropping some stitches and doing some stuff. So I am pretty excited about that. And you just knit it straight back and forth until it's a certain length and then you graft it together at the end. And then it'll be a cool little headband. So yeah, I think this is gonna just be a really nice little quick kind of cleanser project and I'm very excited about it. Uh, here is the tag for the nightshades. Oh my goodness, there it is. I love this yarn. I also just really love Lerka and her podcast, and I really love her designs. She has quite a few sweater patterns and accessory patterns, and I've always wanted to make one. And I thought this was a really good opportunity. Start out small, something I've always wanted to make. So I'm making a headband with some leftovers. Yay. My last finished whip, my last whip, <laughs> my last whip, is another new cast on. It is Living in a Fat Squirrel Fibers Project Bag. And this is something that I, this is a pattern that I've been waiting for to come out since I first saw it on Maria's podcast. So this is a design by Maria Monska, who has the Stitched in Sweden podcast, and it's the Eliza sweater. I saw her designing this sweater and I fell in love with it and I wanted it so bad and as soon as she released it, I got it and I cast it on. So this is a baby and a little kid's pattern and I'm knitting it for Lucy, my two-year-old. And so I'm doing the, oh, by the way, I didn't mention, I'm so bad at this. I did the smallest size for this sweater. And for this, I'm doing the second to smallest size. So it's the two-year size. And it is a top-down raglan, I think-ish, right? I don't know. It's got an interesting construction. Uh, it's a top-down brioche sweater, and it calls for either two fingering weight yarns held together or a DK weight yarn. I'm doing two strands of fingering weight yarn held together, and I'm striping them. So I'll show you the yarns in a minute. But um, yeah, I really love this pattern. It's just an all-over brioche sweater, which I thought would be super cute for her. Uh, she named, she has a daughter who's a little younger than Lucy, um, who it looks super cute on. And she named this sweater after Stacy of Stress Knit's daughter, who is a little older than Lucy. And, um, her name is Eliza. And so that's why this is the Eliza sweater. Uh, and it's, I just love it because I love both of them. And I think it's really cool that they both have daughters around Lucy's age. And I just love the pattern and I'm super excited to be making it. So this is what it looks like so far. This is the front. It is the same on the front and back so far. I've got my little bee progress keeper on it. This is from Beehive Yarns. And I'm knitting this on my high, high sharps interchangeables again, US size five. Um, did I swatch? I didn't swatch. <laughs> so five is what, just what the pattern calls for. And as you can see, I'm striping it. So the yarns that I'm using are four different skeins, two of which were full skeins, one of which is leftover. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not knitting it on fives. This is a holder. This is the needle I'm using. It's a size seven. I'm knitting it on size sevens. So what have I got here? Kind of my main color, the color that I really, really liked for it 
was this one. This is Malabrigo Sock in the Rayon Vert colorway. And it's a really lovely dark purple, magenta, greenish, variegated, oops, color. It's gone now. I have a little bit of a different setup, <laughs> so things might look a little different, and uh, anyway. Anyway, my next color is Amethyst Hour by Junebug Fibers, and this is a merino and silk base, and this is really pretty. And then my other two colors, these were both scraps. This is Handmaiden in the, it's, it's Handmaiden Fine Yarns something something. It is the Dark Before Dawn colorway. And that is a wool silk and cashmere blend. And these are all fingering weight yarns. This is a Madeline Tosh yarn. Uh, I know that the base is matte. Tosh Mo Light, which is a merino mohair single ply fingering weight. I don't know what the colorway is, um, but it's like pinks and peaches with gray speckles. And so the idea is just that I'm kind of holding them together, holding two different colorways together at a time and kind of switching so that they end up being stripes. So. I like how it's turning out so far. This is, I think, the front piece. I don't know, this is one of either the front piece or the back piece. This is part of the neckline here, shoulders, and then I'm doing something next to attach, to do the other side and knit down, and then I'm gonna join them and do it in around, something like that, I don't know. But it's coming along really nicely. It's very fun to work on. I very much like knitting brioche. I don't do it very often, but when I do, I fall in love with it every single time. There is a brioche cardigan that I recently discovered. Uh, I think it was recently published, and uh, I'm in love with it, and now I want to make that for myself. So that's a fingering weight brioche cardigan and it's an open front one which you know is my favorite so I'm really into this I'm really into doing this brioche it's so much fun. okay and while this is two color brioche I'm not doing the two color technique because I'm just holding the two yarns together so it's nice and easy I'm just doing plain old brioche back and forth without switching or dropping yarns or colors or anything like that it's a very fun it's very fun to work on I definitely recommend you checking out this pattern if you like brioche and if you have little ones to knit for. I love it. Uh, her original version has two finger and weight yarns held together of the same colorway, so that can make it a lot easier too, but you know me and I really like using scraps and I like, I like a good scrappy looking project. <laughs> so I'm loving this project a whole, whole lot. And that is everything I have been working on. As far as shop update, I am not going to have a shop update this week. I typically have them every two weeks, but I think moving forward I might be doing once a month instead. So my plan for January is to do January 30th, I think is the day. Yes, January 30th. It's a Saturday and it's in about two weeks from now. So that's when I plan to do my next shop update. If you want to be kept up to date on getting ready for that, then you can follow me on Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. I'll announce it here the day before on my podcast. And you can also sign up for my newsletter, which I am getting back into actually using as a function of the business. <laughs> I, I kind of stopped doing a newsletter for a very long time, but I'll only do newsletters when I'm about to have an update. So if you want to be kept up to date on that, you can sign up for that newsletter. And my plan for this next update is to do mostly my non-superwash base, which is 100% non-superwash merino fingering weight yarn. So it'll be mostly that in different colorways and um, some old colorways and some new ones that I'm coming up with for that base specifically. And then I'm also gonna do my Valentine's Day update. So I'm gonna have at least two Valentine's Day colorways on various bases. So that's what I'm planning for January 30th, just so you know. And 
that's it. I'm dying the yarn for that now. In fact, after I record, I'm gonna go do some dyeing and I'm very excited about it. I love dyeing on that now, it's super wash base. So I think I will leave you there and I hope you're having a really great January so far. Uh, I hope you will take part in the make-alongs with me if either of those sound interesting to you. I don't know about you, but I know I definitely have UFOs that need to be handled. So, do you? <laughs> um, and yeah, seasons. I don't know what I'm going to do for winter yet myself. Uh, oh, also whips are allowed in that. I don't care. Yeah, you know, you know. If it's an UFO, you need to finish for the season's make-along. That works, too. I might count my headband as my winter make-along thing because my ears get cold in the winter. I don't know. <sighs> okay. Yes. Join us if you like over on Ravelry or on Instagram. Let me know in the comments below if you're going to partake in either of those. I would love to know. Uh, if you like the video, please feel free to like and subscribe. And... I hope you're having a really great day. Have fun and stay awesome.